Hey guys, Chris Jones, episode 61 of Ask Me Anything. Today I am taking a question from a friend uh, who posted it to Facebook. His name is Adam Humphreys. And he says, how did you make your first app? And did you uh, develop it yourself? And how did you find funding, if not? So, um, cool. So the first app I ever developed was Refer Local. It was my first startup after my original startup, Pepper Jam. So we're talking about building an app for this company back in, you know, probably 2012. So that was around the first time I built an app. It was really at the beginning of, of the, the whole concept of, of mobile apps. Uh, we had to build both a consumer side app and a merchant app. So they were separate apps. The consumer app allowed people to buy deals where the merchant app allowed uh, merchants to scan the deals and redeem the deals and, and basically uh, create reporting around that. And we built it on both iOS and Android. Uh, nope, I did not build it myself. Uh, I put an in-house team in place, which is one of the options that you have. Um, or anyone has that has an app idea, and I served as the project manager. That project manager position is something uh, that I've played uh, very actively in all the apps that I've built over the years. It's, it's a real key position. So it's not only the app developer, but the project manager uh, that is necessary to make this you know, sort of a reality. But what I realized in building that in-house team was that there was a huge supply demand discrepancy with regard to people who wanted apps built and app agencies that were out there. So I came up with this idea and I founded a company called Epic Mobile Apps. And we've gone on to build some super successful apps. Um, everything from iFart to Beditations. Uh, you guys have probably heard of French Girls. And most recently we've built a special guest app. But so if I just said I answered your question, I don't think I'd give you much value. Here's what I think you're really getting at. I think what you're really getting at is, if you have an app idea, how can you bring it to reality? And that, my friend, is a great question. So um, I took some notes, having uh, had a couple of days to stew on your question and think through how I could add value here. So this is a little bit process-oriented, but I want to make sure that you have a process um, that you could use to build your dream app. So first things first, you alluded to it in your original question, but you need to lock in funding. Um, app development pricing varies depending on the complexity of the app, uh, who builds the app, and where you have it built. Who builds it and where you have it built, two separate things. Um, from experience, on the low end, you're gonna be spending about $10,000 to build a legit you know, minimally viable product, prototype, um, and that's on the low end to upwards of 50 plus thousand uh, dollars. You know, where we're at right now with special guest app, just as an example, is we've invested uh, significantly over $300,000 in the app as it is right now, projected to probably double that amount of investment just in development over the next 12 months. So, you know, depending on how serious you are about what you want, and depending on the complexity, among other things, <clears throat> you know, it could get uh, it could get expensive. So, once you uh, have money secured, you have at least three options. And by the way, I'm not going to go into the specific strategies I have for raising capital because I've done AMA videos on those. If there's enough demand, if you guys are interested in it, go ahead and, and post below in a comment, and I'd be happy to to kind of create a, a, a shorter vi video just on strategies for how you guys can raise capital. But so, so once you lock in the funding, the second thing is uh, you have about, you have, I think you have three primary options for getting this app built. Uh, option one is what I use with Refer Local, which is to build your own internal team. Uh, this will likely be the hardest for you to accomplish because you may have to provide office space, employee benefits, uh, you know, you're going to have to meet payroll on a regular basis, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And you also, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to need a really strong project manager so the project doesn't go terribly out of scope and basically off the rails. Um, because if it goes off the rails, you'll probably run out of money. 
uh, and it will never become a reality. So that's why I said the project management is key. So option one, in-house team. Option two, just outsource it. Outsource it to a freelance website like Upwork or Freelancer. Uh, these sites are built for this exact purpose. There are freelancers around the world with the skills necessary to build mobile apps. Um, and they're available, really, uh, at your disposal. Uh, the nice thing about this option is that uh, it's likely the most affordable route to take. But uh, the greatest challenge is you'll, uh, you know, kind of you get what you pay for, right? So you've got to be very careful that you don't go on the cheap and end up with something low quality that nobody wants, right? Or nobody's going to use because it doesn't work. So you get what you pay for. Um, you know, I was trying to think, you know, how many times have I used Upwork over the years? I've used Upwork dozens of times, and I would say 70% of the time something terribly went wrong. Um, most recently, uh, the way it works is you post a project and then developers could bid on the project, right? And you're, of course, you try to find the lowest price with the, the, the resume that looks the best. Well, we hired an individual who had basically a US-based name, like an English name. And uh, it, it, about four or five weeks into the project, some of the language, some of the, the English started to change a bit. And I really, the English, not his name, but the English, and I realized that he was, he was from, uh, from Russia, which isn't a problem, um, but you have to be careful. Some of the foreign developers will literally fake their name <laughs> at work, you gotta be careful, uh, to try to win your business. And then once they win your business, you later find out that you're not dealing with the same person that was in the Upwork profile. So, um, long story short, Upwork can be very affordable, uh, but it's also high risk that you need to take into consideration. All right, so the final option is to hire a professional app development agency. Uh, as I mentioned before, I founded a company probably four or five years ago now called Epic Mobile Apps. Um, but there are dozens and dozens of legitimate uh, high-end, I consider Applic a high-end mobile app development agency, and there are you know, dozens of competitors around the country. Uh, one way to see uh, who they are, right, to, so you could consider all your various options, is to check out a website like clutch.co. Uh, Clutch does independent research on each of these firms, reaches out to their clients, interviews those clients, and then uh, basically provides a rating and review uh, of these app agencies. Um, I'm very familiar with Clutch because we've been on their top mobile app development agency list many years straight. And I think we have almost a perfect uh, five out of five rating on there. But there are other agencies that do as well. So again, it's not only, yeah, if, you know, if you could afford Epic, you probably want to go with Epic. Um, but in terms of cost, just to give you a relative sense of if, if you're going to source this to a US-based professional mobile app development agency, um, you should expect to pay on the low end $100 per hour. Um, and then for access to someone like Epic, you're going to be paying about $150 an hour. Um, there are, you know, we're based in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. So that 150 an hour is a high-end rate here, uh, but in New York City or San Francisco or Chicago or LA or wherever, you know those rates could go into the hundreds. But again, the rates may scare you. But at the end of the at the end of the day, remember what I said: you get what you pay for. So, um, guys, that's it um, on this question. Uh, thanks, Adam, so much. I really appreciate uh, you know you asking me the question. And for those of you that found value in this, uh, you know, check out my YouTube channel where I host all of these videos and go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss another one. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.